Good morning. My name is Samantha Riles from Sugar Research Australia and I'd like to welcome you to our first milling webinar for 2019. Today, Anthony Mann from Queensland University of Technology will be presenting on the topic Increased Capacity to Undertake Cane Preparation Research Through Modelling and Experimentation. We encourage you to take an active part in today's webinar by asking questions. As this webinar is in listen-only mode, you can do this at any time throughout the webinar by typing your question into the message box, which is located in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Anthony will be able to answer your questions at the end of his presentation. If you have any technical issues, the team at Red Bank, Red Bank will be able to assist. Please type any technical issues you may have into the message box on the bottom left of your screen and someone will reply to you privately. Or alternatively, please dial 1800 733 416. And if you experience any issues in hearing the sound coming from your computer, feel, please feel free to listen to the webinar through your phone. To do this, simply dial the toll-free 1800 number provided in the message box and when prompted, enter the passcode provided. I'd like now to hand you over to our presenter for today, Anthony Mann. Thank you, Sam. Uh, welcome to uh, this webinar on increased capacity to undertake cane preparation research through modelling and experimentation. I'll be presenting the uh, seminar, uh, but others working on this uh, project include Florence Plaza, Arkin Bethegir and uh, Jeff Kent who's the uh, manager of the project. Okay, as a general introduction, uh, we're all aware that good preparation um, is essential for good, um, good extraction. So basically, um, if we don't get the good preparation, um, then we're not going to get good extraction. So when we have issues with shredders, um, um, that can cause reduced extraction. Uh, we've also got called high for gas moisture content, uh, which can affect your boiler stations. And we also have, uh, we have stoppages due to choke, due to um, um, the feed shoot level and feed shoot level control. So windage is the term that we use for any undesirable airflow around the shredder. And one of the reasons we're interested in it is that windage, um, depending on which way the air goes, it can reduce the transfer of energy um, from the shredder hammers um, to the billets that we want to smash up. Uh, like I was saying before, windage it can cause control problems, especially if the windage goes back up the um, shredder feed chute, um, then you can cause uh, um, issues with your chute level control, and it can also cause chokes, such as in the, um, in the head box above the um, shredder feed chute. And probably the most visible um, consequence of windage uh, is the emissions of dust. Um, and billets and trash that come out of the shredder, either up, up around the uh, cane inlet or around the cane outlet. Now this windage investigation is uh, part of SRA project uh, 2015 um, number 18 and as part of this um, windage investigation that we're doing in this project. We're looking at, um, we've looked at three different um, shredder, shredder configurations at three different factories. And the factories we chose, uh, Rocky Point Mill, uh, Plain Creek Mill, and Tully Mill. And the investigation involves computational fluid dynamics modeling and experimental investigations of the um, airflow pattern at, in the shredders and inlet and outlet ductwork at these three factories. So the CFD modelling um, that we uh, that was carried out as part of this work, it all used the um, ANSYS fluid CFD package, and the package, uh, the modelling that we did with for the windage investigation anyway, it was basically just concentrating on the airflows. The CFD package um, has different parts. There's the first part, basically, where we input the geometry of the um, of the shredder and the inlet and outlet chutes. In, um, and that's called design modeler. The next 
stage of um, the modelling process is the mesh generator, in which it generates a mesh that has larger cells sort of away from the hammers and smaller cells sort of near the hammers. So the idea is to sort of get a mesh that can pick up some of the small clearances you have in a shredder and also pick up uh, and use a more coarse mesh sort of in the inlet and outlet chutes away from the shredder. And the uh, package also has a model setup sort of section. And that's the part where you sort of um, put in the air properties and you'll put in the rotational speed of the shredder, the direction of the shredder, and also the type of boundary conditions um, that we used in the modelling. And the thing to note with this modelling is that um, basically with windage air can enter in at the inlet or, or where the cane enters or where the prepared cane leaves the shredder. So basically, um, but we don't know for any particular setup beforehand what's going to happen. And so the way we set up the model is that we just let the model predict what's going to happen. So we never actually said, oh, I'll put an airflow in here or an air outflow somewhere else. We actually just put in the, um, the uh, shredder rot or the shredder rotor geometry, told it its rotational speed, and then put pressure boundary conditions at the inlet, and, uh, at the cane inlet and the prepared cane outlet and then just see what the model predicts. And the final stage of the CFD modelling process is a sub-program called CFD Post, and that's used for the visualisation of the results. So the first factory we looked at um, was Rocky Point, and, and having a look at the um, flows through the um, Rocky Point shredder, and the model that we set up of the Rocky Point shredder include the actual shredder, the rotor, the hammers, included the inlet chute um, up, to the, um, up to the head box, and also a fair bit of the, cane of the prepared cane elevator chute. That is where the cane exits the shredder. Uh, the work we, we did included um, velocity measurements. Uh, that We used a hot wire anemometer to measure the velocities in the inlet chute and of the cane inlet chute and the prepared cane outlet chute. And we also used a portable pressure meter to measure some of the pressures. So these uh, measurements were done with the um, shredder operating, but with no cane input. Basically, we can't do the um, hot wire anemometer velocity measurements with cane going through it because it would just um, destroy the hot wire anemometer. So um, uh, Rocky Point very kindly um, ran the shredder without any crushing without crushing so that we could do these measurements and I'm very appreciative of that. So this uh, figure here just shows the uh, setup at Rocky Point Mill. Right up here to the top right, we've got the prepared cane, oh, sorry, the cane elevator, basically where the um, cane billets and trash enter the head box at the top and then go down this inlet chute down into the shredder. The shredder rotates um, clockwise, looking at the, from this view. We've got the motor here that drives the shredder. The um, shredded billets fall down into what we call the boot below the shredder. And then the prepared cane goes up an, an elevator inside this prepared cane elevator chute, uh, which goes up here, up towards the first mill. So yeah, Rocky Point has an electric motor driven shredder, but most of the shredders in the industry would be driven by um, steam turbines. So this figure here uh, just shows the um, design modeler. Basically this is a model setup, a view um, component of this ANSYS Fluent package, and just showing the different components of the um, Rocky Point shredder um, in that out, and along with the inlet and outlet chutes. So what we have here is the cane inlet, where the cane, after coming up the cane elevator, goes into the inlet here. We have the inlet curtain, and the purpose of the inlet curtain is to prevent air ingress or air out, or air leaving the um, system, um, either with or against the cane flow. Cane then flows down this chute here, and notice that the Rocky Point has deflectors in the inlet chute that help deflect the um, cane towards the uh, front wall. Uh, different factories 
it may not always be the front wall at all factory, but at this the rocky point, the front wall or the grid bar wall or some factories call it the shear wall or the shredder. So basically that's the wall where it comes down and then gets smashed by the shredder hammers up against the initial impact point here and on the grid bar comes out through the bottom here and we have underneath the boot but the idea is that the prepared the shredded cane or prepared cane falls onto the conveyor and the conveyor takes it takes it up the prepared cane elevator chute. So basically um, this shredder so it has the um, inlet curtain here, deflectors in the inlet chute, it's got a windage reduction plate up here and it's got the grid bars here so these are sort of um, bits of rectangular bits of steel welded onto welded onto this um, where it comes around here where the um, billets are smashed up against these grid bars and then Rocky Point actually has a few wear, uh, wear protection bars just to sort of uh, reduce wear on this later part of the grid. So basically the prepared cane comes out through here and up through here, up and up the prepared cane elevator. So also shown on this figure uh, is the measurement location. So here we've got measurement locations on the inlet chute. So they were reasonably close to the bottom of this um, bottom deflector, or that, that is the vertical elevation was. And we've got we've also got measurement locations at the bottom of the outlet chute here and at the top of the outlet chute there. So here is a um, side elevation view of the predicted airflow distribution uh, going through the um, Rocky Point shredder arrangement. So basically what we've got here, basically you've got the shredder rotating clockwise in this view and you note the velocity scale here, we go up to from 0 metres per second up to about 100 metres per second and so we can sort of see very high velocities around the tips of the hammers, so basically the air near the tips of the hammers gets to the high velocity up around 100 metres per second, whereas in most of the um, inlet chutes and most of the outlet chutes, the uh, gas velocities are a lot lower. And we can't see clearly in this shot, but basically with the Rocky Point Shredder, when we did the uh, measurements, found that the air flow generally whisked the cane, and so the air flow was down the inlet and then comes back out down through the um, cane inlet chute and then up through the prepared cane outlet chute. So this particular uh, picture here just shows uh, some of the inlet chute velocity measurements and comparing them with the predictions. So what we did here is we went from that inlet chute location, we've got different distances from the um, front wall of the um, shredder inlet chute, 0.185 of a metre, 0.385 of a metre, 0.585 of a metre and 0.74 of a metre and we've got um, measurement positions across the width of the inlet chute, five measurement positions equally spaced. So if we go here we can sort of see we've got predicted velocities, 2.79, 3.285.23 across and so on, across the width there and then we've got the measured velocities across there too. And so what we've found is that we get reasonable agreement between the measured, predicted and measured velocities around the center of the, um, or around the middle of the chute. So this is the middle um, going from side to side. Whereas near the walls, generally the agreement is not as good and generally the predictions are a little less than the measurements. Not at all points, but at most of the points near the side walls, so as in positions one and five. And similar did the same sort of thing, the outlet chute. So these are the um, measurements and predictions from the top location. So these are the points measured from the top of the prepared cane elevator chute. And what we found is that generally near the top there, the predictions are greater than the measurements.
and going on to the um, uh, measurements from the bottom locations in the prepared cane outlet chute. And we have, gen as a general rule, we're near the bottom, which is basically a depth of 0.185 metres, so that's near the bottom of the outlet chute. Um, the predictions are generally a fair bit less than the measurements. So basically, um, initial conclusions for that are that in Rocky Point investigation, the um, predictions and, and measured velocities in the chutes were generally less than 10 metres per second, which is way less than the uh, velocity in the act around the shredder rotor, which can get up to around 100 metres per second. So yeah, we had reasonable agreement around the um, mi middle of the um, inlet chute, but less good agreement near the walls of the inlet chute. And with a prepared cane elevator chute, basically we had um, the predictions, we predicted more flow near the top of the chute, and we predicted less than the measured flow near the bottom of the chute. Okay, uh, moving on to the uh, second shredder setup that we studied, was at Plain Creek. Uh, the shredder's uh, just under two and a half metres wide, and the hammers at this shredder in a checkerboard pattern, the half complement. Now we've got 208 hammers, 16 rows, and 13 hammers per row. And we were interested in this shredder because basically uh, they had a lot of modifications were carried out uh, during the um, maintenance season. Uh, they they um, added wet uh, windage plates, uh, they removed an internal baffle, they modified the casing um, of the shredder, uh, they relocated the kicker, and they also modified the feed chute. And the purpose of these modifications was to reduce windage and also to um, improve the feeding into the shredder. So uh, we did some uh, computational fluid dynamic simulations of the shredder um, before and after the modifications and also did measurements before and after the modifications. Uh, but unfortunately, due to changing ductwork and casing, uh, we couldn't do the after measurements at exactly the same location as we did the before measurements. So here um, that shows the design model representation of the Plain Creek shed Shredder setup before and after um, the modifications. So this is before the modifications and this is after the modifications. So you can see before they had an internal baffle and um, yeah, they had the kicker in this position. Uh, they have a curtain just above the cane inlet conveyor and the cane inlet conveyor um, finishes off just about here. And then before they had a they had round type of casing. Then yeah, during the 2018 maintenance season they made all these modifications. They basically um, changed the shape of the casing. Uh, they put in windage plates here at the inlet and the exit of the, um, of the shredder. They changed the geometry a bit here. And also they um, changed the um, clean shoot so that it would feed from, from the back here or the um, grid bar side, not just go straight down. And they also moved the kicker. So the kicker basically sort of just pushes the prepared cane up against this, this wall um, so that the cane flows primarily down, down that wall. Same with this one here. So yeah, cane comes in up here, out there and out the bottom. And the same with the new configuration. In through here and out through the bottom. Yeah, and like I was saying before, with the, um, yeah, because of the change casing, the measurement locations originally were here. These were for our velocity uh, measurements were originally done here, but after the mods, we did the velocity measurements up there. So here we have the, uh, some plots showing um, the before modifications and after modification velocity distributions. And what we find here, the modeling predicts the circulation zones um, in the um, inlet chute here, and then a less intense recirculation zone, but a bit more disconnected from the actual rotor 
after the uh, modifications and also predicts the modelling predicts the circulation zones here and here before the modifications and there and there after the modifications. And here just a close up view and we see um, here we've got fairly strong type of um, recirculation occurring here. Um, so basically before the modifications it comes up here, spins around there and then um, on the other side of this internal baffle we've got much lower velocities and we've got a recirculation but um, low, a lower velocity recirculation. Uh, sorry, recirculation. Mm -hmm. Okay, now with the um, modifier after the changes, um, they had a windage plate here. They're showing up here. What that does is deflect more flow up here and reduces the amount of flow coming in from the main shredder rot rotor region that goes into this recirculation zone. And what happens is that recirculation becomes predicted to become a little less intense. So this table here just compares the velocity measurements and predictions before the modifications. So the measurement locations were basically um, basically um, from the side wall. So basically from the side wall and then we did different distances from the grid bar side wall. So basically the measurement locations were approximately here, here and here and different distances, so moving in from this wall. So what we have, the innermost location, so 740 millimetres from the side wall, we measured 14.8, 7.5, uh, 14.8 metres per second, 7.5 metres per second, and 950 millimetres from the grid bar side wall, which is basically this location here we measured much lower velocities and similar sort of distribution closer to the side wall. However, the predictions, so, um, and that middle point, not too bad, but closer to the side wall, yet the modelling did not pick that up right. So basically the modelling is saying that we're getting some upflow here and we're actually Sorry, the bottling is saying that they're getting downflow there, apologies for that, when the measurements were indicating that we're getting upflow. The predictions also predict lower velocities. Uh, lower velocities here, predictions here, which are consistent with the measurements. But the measurements were saying that some downflow when the predictions were saying some upflow. So this table here just compares the measurements and predictions after the modifications. So note that this locations are a little bit different, They're a bit higher, higher up here. So we've got the um, the new measurement locations at a high high elevation. And we see right up next to the wall, we've got lower velocities. Oh, we've got um, after the changes, the velocities are lower. So this is right up against the grid bar side wall and a bit further away from the grid bar side wall. But the predictions, yeah, we're still predicting some downflow when the measurements still showed some upflow. So we still haven't got we haven't got that right at this stage. And further in, um, we're getting the direction of the uh, flow right, so flow going up, but we're predicting a bit, a bit higher magnitudes. So basically just summarising the um, uh, measurements and predictions, we get some, some agreement between the um, predictions and the measurements when we're away from the grid bar side of the inlet chute, uh, but when we're closer to the grid bar side of the inlet chute, um, yeah, the predictions show um, downflow, but the measurements show some upflow.
But after the agreement, uh, we get some agreement um, between the predictions and measurements uh, yeah, away from the grid bar side wall of the inlet chute. Uh, but when we're closer to the grid bar wall side of the inlet chute, um, the same, we've got the same problem. The prediction shows some downflow with the measurements show some upflow. Yeah, but so the, measure, the velocity measurements show definitely so lower velocities after the changes, uh, but we couldn't um, confirm. But unfortunately, because the measurement locations weren't the same, we couldn't 100% confirm that they were a lot lower at the actual lower measurement location at the lower elevation. Okay, and the um, third shredder that we um, studied in this work is the Tully shredder. It would be one of the biggest shredders in the industry. Uh, the havers in this shredder are uh, in a checkerboard camera, uh, checkerboard pattern, half complement of um, hammers. And prior to the 2018 crushing season, the uh, shredder had around 168 hammers, had 168 hammers, 12 rows, 14 hammers a row. And then they... Um, before the crushing scene had started, they upgraded that or increased the number of hammers to 224 by increasing um, the number of um, rows of hammers on the rotor. Now when they did this, after they did this upgrade to the rotor with the extra hammers in there, uh, they had a massive increase in windage. And the increase in windage was much greater than the proportional effect of the added hammers. Like basically they added a third more hammers but the amount of increased windage was way more than that. And so um, basically it was causing major issues with the, um, with the um, operation of the shredder. And so um, Tully Mill added a windage plant during the um, um, 2018 cr crushing season and achieved a significant reduction in windage. And we were involved by uh, carrying out some CFD simulations and measurements um, around the artillery shredder uh, before and after the installation of this windage plate. So this is uh, back to the design model representations. We've got the cane inlet um, coming in at the top and we did some velocity measurements here. And we've got the inlet chute here where we did some measurements here. And notice the Tully shredder does not have um, any baffles in the inlet chute like the Rocky Point one does and like the Plain Creek one had initially. Uh, it does have feed rolls uh, to feed the um, cane into the shredder, but that were, they weren't included in the model because it, that didn't protrude much into the main flow domain. And here we've got the grid bars. Um, before the, um, they've always had this windage plate here, but this was the windage plate that they added during the 2008 crushing season. And this is when this, this, the addition of this windage plate gave them the big reduction in windage. And here we've just got the predicted velocity distributions in the um, Tully shredder setup before and after the introduction of the windage plate. And you can see here that there are lower velocities uh, after the introduction of the windage plate in the inlet chute than before the introduction of the windage plate. So here we go. But when you look at the velocity distribution or the predicted velocity distributions in the outlet chute, there doesn't seem to be that much difference. But the main sort of differences we see here are um, around the inlet chute. Here, the velocities are lower than the velocities in the inlet chute around there. So this is just a close-up here where we see um, better effect or the effect of the windage plate more closely. And we see here predicted velocities going up here. And we've got the windage plate. We have um, the air has got further to go to get to the um, front wall. And it does with without the windage plate. We notice now with it at the bottom, the um, velocities look much the same. And we see in this view where the line, we line, the plane of view lines up the shredder hammer tips. So we actually get the very high velocities at the shredder hammer tips.
So what we have here is the um, measurements and predictions before and after the addition of the windage plate. And we measured these um, distances um, this, this distances from the uh, grid bar side ball, so with no added plate with the added plate, and no added plate and with the added plate, and you've got different distances um, from the side ball. And so the measurements um, we have right up here, no added plate, um, we've got a, about between four and seven metres per second going up the um, up the grid bar side wall of the inlet chute. And then with, with the added plate, we actually have much lower velocities. So basically these are the measurements in the inlet chute. The predictions, uh, the predictions show a big reduction in the velocities, but still we get the, um, yeah, the direction of the flow wrong. The predictions actually say some flow down the wall, before and after the front wall, before and after the modifications. Right here, that the measurements only show flow down the front wall after the modification. So there's still some uh, more work or uh, further investigation to, to work out exactly what's happening in, in those inlet shoots and how we can better model it. So we also measured um, some velocities at the um, Kane Inlet. So on this thing here, the um, velocity direction is the, basically we're calling outflow positive. So basically, we're just looking, looking up here. So what, what's happening to the velocity? So basically, outflow velocity we call positive. And we see that at the outflow, uh, before the windage plate was added, they have around ne uh, nearly 17 metres per second air velocity coming out through the inlet curtain. But when they added the windage plate, they had a small inflow. The predictions, yeah, the predictions, well, we predicted an outflow and a small reduction in this outflow with the windage plate. So we predicted a reduction, yeah, but we did not get the um, the change in direction, or that big change that was evident in the measurements. And also, yeah, the predicted pressures are a little different, uh, quite different to the um, measured pressures in the boot, in the boot, basically down here, and in the prepared cane elevator chute, in the prepared, prepared cane elevator chute. Uh, just under here. Yeah, so basically, conclusions from the Tully Shredder investigation is that the windage plate had a huge effect, uh, and there's a much, and there's a now, instead of a big airflow against the flow of cane into the um, head box, there is now a small flow with the cane, which is, and they're a lot happier with that. Uh, the prediction, the predicted improvement was a lot less than the actual improvement, and the change in the airflow direction up against the um, the uh, grid bar wall of the um, inlet chute uh, was not predicted. So basically, yeah, overall conclusions are from this investigation. Uh, we have not seen any other investigation of windage in shredders um, done by anyone else in the world. So basically it's the first, first stab at this sort of um, study. And what we've found is, yeah, that some geometry changes seem to have very little effect on windage, where some other changes, like the, this one windage plane at Tully, had a huge effect. And yeah, so basically, yeah, the, um, from the modelling, we can predict some, the effect of some of these changes, but not others. Uh, the modelling predicted some inlet duct recirculations that they didn't seem to pick up in the measurements. But what may need further investigation is that it's quite diff difficult to determine the direction of the flow in the inlet duct, especially if there is actually some recirculation in there. Uh, we did something at Rocky Point by putting some string in one of the holes and having a look through it, and we could tell whether the flow was up or down, but um, getting an actual gauge of whether the flow is going into or away from the wall 
that's quite difficult. So we'll probably we do further studies of this. Um, I need to get a better way, probably using multi-point pedo to get some idea of the direction of the airflow. And also, um, another thing we noticed the measurement is that uh, we could not, the measurements had to be done fairly quickly because the factory would have to run the, run the shredder, um, basically using steam from their boilers or, or electricity for the purposes of the measurements. And um, in some that would hold up crushing. So obviously we don't want to impose on the factory and we're very appreciative of, of the efforts of Rocky Point, Plain Creek and Tully for assisting with this work. Um, but if we want to do more detailed and um, a more detailed measurement program, we we'll probably have to look at other options, like maybe doing some measurements on a small scale, um, or scale on the scale model of a, of a small scale shredder um, that we've refurbished as part of this project. Okay, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, this work, the fund, first and foremost, the funding support from Sugar Research Australia, and. Uh, also the in-kind support and assistance provided by the staff of Rocky Point Mill, Plain Creek Mill and Tully Mill and also the management of those factories uh, for their support. And also in particular Terry Drury and David McClintock from Rocky Point Mill, Simon Ivers, Brendan, Brenton Wood and Elroy Buzek from Plain Creek Mill and Michael Verai and Paul O'Kane from Tully Mill. So thank you all very much for all participating. So I'd like to give you an opportunity now to ask Anthony any questions and you can type these into the message box on the bottom left of your screen. Uh, Stephen has typed a message here to ask about uh, will we be emailing the slides. Uh, yes we will along with, an, um, with a recording of the web webinar as well. I'd like to thank you for attending our first SRA QUT milling webinar. We hope that you found it of value and are keen to get feedback from you. You will see a feedback survey that will pop up on the screen shortly that we'd like you to complete. It will only take a few minutes of your time and it will allow us to improve our webinars in the future. Our next milling webinar will be held on the 21st of March and will be presented by Michael Collette from QUT who will speak about Australian Research Council project with Wilmar on the subject of asset management. And you can find further details about our upcoming webinar topics on the SRA webpage under milling. So thank you for all attending today and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar.